history is all around us. Perhaps no one knows that better than HCC professor Dr. Nicholas Cox. Well, I started teaching at HEC back in 2008. I joined the Southwest Campus faculty as a full-time professor of U.S. History and Texas History uh, back in 2014. I do teach both halves of U.S. History, which is sort of the general state-required history course that all of our Texas graduates are required to take wherever they go to college. Mm -hmm. I also teach a sophomore-level Texas History class, and that is a class that some students elect to take as, a, as an additional class. Uh, it's also a class that some people take as a substitute for their freshman U.S. history class if they're inclined to take a more challenging or specialized topic class. Last month, Dr. Cox's lectures focused on the great storm of 1900 that struck Galveston 115 years ago. For someone who's not heard about the Gulf Coast storm, it lands in Galveston in September of 1900 and best estimates are that it had uh, winds of 120 to 150 miles per hour. Today we would probably categorize it as a category 4 storm, although some people have suggested that it may have been as strong as a category 5. Uh, there have only been three category 5 storms that hit the United States uh, and so if this was a category 5 storm it's one of the four biggest in US history. Because it struck Galveston in 1900 at a time when that was the biggest city in Texas, there was an enormous loss of life. Estimates are that there were 6,000 dead. Uh, that this storm as a result is the largest natural disaster in U.S. history if you count by death toll. So there's been never an earthquake, a fire, a storm that has killed more people than this storm. It's a pretty substantial event on that ground alone. While the storm of 1900 may now be a part of history, Dr. Cox explains how its effects are still seen today. From that point forward, we got all of those things. The seawall was built, the city was raised, and after a 1915 hurricane, which may well have been larger, there was a much, much smaller loss of property and life, but damage to that seawall sponsored a series of re, re, uh, expansions and reconstructions. And so now we have a sort of 17 uh, mile long seawall that does prevent the kind of mass flooding and property destruction and loss of life that happened in 1900. But it really did hobble Gabbleston's economic development at almost the coincidental moment when oil was struck in East Texas and led to Houston's economic rise. So a lot of people see the great hurricane of 1900 and the oil discovery of 1901 as the two defining events that caused Galveston and Houston to go on different paths historically. Recently, Dr. Cox gave a presentation about the hurricane for Gulf Coast Reads. The Gulf Coast Reads program has selected a novel written by a Sugarland author, and that novel, The Promise, is set, it's a romantic love story set amid the great storm of 1900. And I suppose every year, whenever the anniversary of the storm comes up, the Gulf Coast Regional Libraries and Museums have little events, but because Gulf Coast Reads selected this novel, there are over 25 library systems with autonomous book clubs reading it together, and this month alone there's over a hundred different storm-related activities at museums, libraries, schools, and historical sites around the Gulf Coast area. For people who are really interested in learning more about the Galveston hurricane, there are a very large number of books over 115 years now, but it's actually quite easy for people when they go down to Galveston, if they make a stop at that Rosenberg Library and go through many of the personal papers of hundreds of survivors that the library has collected, that's certainly worth half a day of your trip to Galveston if you spend some time on the island. You can catch Dr. Cox in a class here on campus or contact him at nicholas.cox at hccs.edu. And for more books about the hurricane of 1900, visit gulfcoastreads.org. For HCC Beat, I'm Gina Monteleone.